My name is Melissa Angerman. I am the Admissions and Transport Manager here at Maryland SPCA. Today I am going to talk about lost and found pets. We often see pets come in here who have been found by a good Samaritan. One of the top reasons that we see is that they weren't aware that their fence had been open or there might be something broken on the fence uh, that they hadn't gotten fixed yet or they were not aware was, was broken. So often it has to do with a pet being in a fenced in yard um, and finding a way to escape from that yard. Another way might be, you know, kids opening a door. Uh, they might open the door because the dog's at the door and they think, oh, the dog wants to go out and they don't understand that they can't just open the door for that dog or cat to go out. There's also when people are doing fireworks outside or just having uh, parties, something that can scare a dog. If they're in a yard, they're gonna be more likely to jump a fence at that time or find a way to try and escape the sound. So it is always good when you know that there's going to be fireworks or any kind of celebration that's going to be happening in your um, area. It's good to make sure that your pet is secure um, and safe inside your home. So if you have a pet sitter, you know, be sure that you give them all the information of your vet for them. Give them some contacts that are local who they can talk to in case of they're anything urgent. But also if you have any problems with your fence or if you know that your dog might dart out um, if they see the mailman or if they see a, like a specific neighbor who they really like and they want to go visit. It's good to give all those details, even though it seems like it's an excessive amount, because another top reason that we see pets come in here is someone's on vacation and the, um, the dog got out or the cat got out and then the sitter doesn't have a way of contacting the owners and they don't have any other contact information for someone local to help. So it is really important to make sure that they have all that information. Another scenario that we see is if a collar is not fitted correctly or if a small child is walking the dog. Um, a dog could, if they get nervous, back out of a collar that is not fitted correctly. So you do want to make sure that you have it fitted uh, not too tight, but also not too loose so that the pet is not able to back out. Um, that goes for you know a flat collar, but also for a harness. And then also when there's a child who's walking the dog, Keep in mind that if your dog all of a sudden decides that it wants to um, start to play with another dog or gets really excited and starts jumping up, that might be too much for a small child to handle. So you do want to make sure that, um, that you also have a hold of the leash or that you are at least there to take over in case all of a sudden something happens. If you have lost a pet, you want to be sure that you're contacting animal control for your area and making a lost pet report. It is important that you continuously reach out to the local animal shelter for where your pet went missing. When a pet is brought into an animal shelter, they have a holding period that could be three days. It could also be five days. Every shelter is different. Once the stray hold is complete at an animal shelter, they can be adopted out. Ideas of what you can do now in order to make it easier to find your pet in case your pet goes missing in the future. Um, one, you can right now go ahead and get as many pictures as you can of your pet. Make sure you have some face shots um, that are directly head on of the face. Also get, um, if your pet has any distinct markings, it's good to get pictures of those distinct markings. Pictures that are, you know, with your family members in your home. Also, what you can do is if you don't have a microchip um, on your pet now or in your pet now, you can contact your local vet and get a microchip. It's always good to make sure that that's up to date. You also want to list emergency contacts. So in case um, in case, say, your dog gets out, out of the yard and you go running to try and catch your dog, but you leave your phone at home, you want to have a backup number. So if somebody does find the pet and is trying to reach you, there's a number, another number that they can also reach. You know, the pet might run out at the time that you have the, the collar off, which is why the microchip is so important. But a collar is also very helpful with your name, telephone number, also, if you have the microchip, the tag for the microchip or the rabies tag, because the rabies tag can be traced back to your vet to be able to get your information. Finding Rover is a site where people can post a pet if they find a pet or if they lost a pet. 
you can go to findingrover.com and register pictures of your pet along with information, the pet's name, uh, description. And that way, if your pet does get out and ends up being lost, you can easily go to the website and just mark your pet as missing. So if you find a pet, you wanna keep in mind that somebody is probably looking for their lost pet. It's easy to see a pet who might look skinny, might look dirty, uh, might have matted hair, and make that assumption that this pet was not cared for. We have to remember that we don't know the backstory. The best thing to do is see if there is a collar with the name tag. If there is, contact the person attached to that name tag. If there's a rabies tag, you can contact the hospital that is marked on that rabies tag and see if they can look up the owner for you. Also, um, you can take the pet to your local vets or contact your local shelter to see if they can check for a microchip. Depending on where you found this pet, some areas you have to take the pet into um, animal control that allows the owner time to find their pet. Other places do allow you to um, take the pet home and try to find the owner directly through your home. Either way, when you do find a pet, you want to contact the animal control that is in the area of where you found the pet, ask them what their process is, what you need to do, and also report the pet as missing. If the animal control that is for the area where you found a pet needs you to bring the pet to them, they will notify you of that and they will explain to you the process for bringing the pet in. If you have found the pet in say like Baltimore City, you have a choice of either sending the pet or keeping the pet and finding an owner. You do have to have the pet <clears throat> for 20 days before you can rehome the pet or consider the pet yours. During the time that you have the pet in your home, you do have to do your due diligence to find the owner. That means posting on Facebook lost pages, posting on next door for the neighborhood um, that you found the pet in, posting, uh, hanging up posters, and also um, contacting animal control for that area so that you can post a found pet report. You can also post on Finding Rover. If you're looking for an owner and anything feels suspicious, you can always call animal control and have them uh, step in to help you. Also, if you are, you know, if you do find the owner and you are bringing the pet to the owner, it is best to meet in a public place instead of having them come to your home or having you go to their home. There are cats who live outside and who prefer to live outside. Often you will see cats outside who might have a piece of their ear missing. That is called an ear tip. These cats have been TNR'd, trap, neuter, release. So that means that somebody is taking care of them. They brought them to a facility so that they could get spayed or neutered, gave them vaccines, and also had the ear tipped so that way you can keep track of them. So if you do find a cat with that marking on their ear, it is a good indicator that that cat belongs outside and belongs where they are. If you find a lost pet and you're not comfortable putting the pet in your car or handling the pet, at that time, it is best if you go ahead and call animal control for the area where you have found the pet and see if they are able to come out and pick up the pet for you. You can also see if you have any friends or neighbors who are in the area who might be able to help you. If you wanna review some of the information that I gave, you can go to our website, mdspca.org. If you have lost or found a pet in the Baltimore City area, you can call Maryland SPCA's Admissions Department at 410-235-8826, extension 100, or you can email us at admissions at mdspca.org.